are talking to Terry Alderton and his new show, Season 4. Is that right? Season 4, yeah. It's just, yeah. It doesn't mean anything because it's never the same <laughs> anyway. So I don't know why. I called it Season 4 because I was going to call it Terry Alderton V2.4. But I don't know if anyone would have really realised what that meant. And uh, so I just called it Season 4, taking the mickey out of the whole American thing because... You know, we call it series, but now we yeah. call it everything seasons, don't we? So yeah. it was a bit of it was nothing to do with the weather seasons. It was uh, sorry, do you want to ask me questions? No, <laughs> um, so tell us about the show. Uh, well, uh, it, it, it's the usual, uh, you know, the usual. Um, that means I've got to change it. It's the, uh, it's the, you know, it's talking to my alter egos and uh, multi personalities and. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm also kind of looking, I mean, there's no real thing to it, but I'm kind of looking at, um, you know, the way uh, everyone judges each other and, and the kind of dividing and conquering and, uh, you know, and, and things about money not existing. And, of course, double-decker buses, which I'm absolutely, I, I've loved them since I was a kid, so I've got this whole, I decided to talk about it on stage, about, you know, the difference with heights of lorries and buses. All right. But And, and also uh, the Wee Man Band, they're a little, little, little band that I bring on. They're not here now. But. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's I can't ever I can't explain it. You know, it's one of those. I hope to think that people like Andy Kaufman and uh, Steve Martin could never explain what they did. You know, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, some people think it's utter utter Emperor's New Clothes. You know, rubbish. Sometimes I think that as well. And uh, and other people really like it. But there's no, you know, people say to me, I don't get what you do, and that's probably because there's nothing to get. So you do a lot of alter egos, yeah. as you're saying. I'm but doing one now. I mean, what's this alter ego? This, is, this isn't really me. <laughs> this is. I don't know who I am. <laughs> I, do, I do know who I am, but. But well, like, where did this come from? Was it just as a child you would do different? No, voices? I was depressed, and uh, I kind of was. Uh, I thought, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't stand this constant, you know, inner, inner goings on. So I thought, if I bring it out and put it out into a stage. Basically, it was like a reinvention. I, I used to do a routine where I talked to these two voices very briefly in a really bad joke. You know, I was saying I was in New York and people couldn't understand my accent. And I said to the guy, could I get a medium white wine? He says we only do the one size, blah, 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 right? And then I would turn around and talk to these voices and say, go back and show him the Bulldog Spirit. Right? Anyway, I was completely depressed and I started doing stand-up again after about four years. And uh, I, I started talking to these two voices and then saying about what I really thought of the show and then carry on like nothing had happened. And Ben Norris, a comedian, great comedian, he's here at the Fringe, actually. Uh, he said, uh, what were you doing? And I, being a professional, said, you know, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. He said, no, 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 that's, you've got something there. So that kind of opened everything up. You know, I kind of then decided, well, because with comedy, for me, it's like, um, it's like there are only, there's so many triggers and there's so many buttons you can push. It's, it's like learning keys and, you know, piano, and you've yeah. got octaves and you've got notes. Same with comedy. It, it's, we've all got the same things. You can't do anything else but but play it differently or do what you want with that. Does that make any sense? It's not a very good simile or metaphor, but um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to take it and, and see where I could, you know, take uh, you know comedy really. Oh yeah. I mean, you could, you're, you're yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Good. yeah, 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 yeah. What time's he going? <laughs> He's mental. I shouldn't say mental. That's you can't say that anymore, can you? Even if you are. <laughs> So, out of all that you do a lot of impressions and voices, what's your favourite? Like, of, of everything you do, do you have one? Um, that's a good question, actually. Um, yeah, I, I like it when I, I like it when I, when I, t I tell you what I do like. I like putting, I like putting an audience in in a place where they feel a bit vulnerable and they feel a little bit nervous about what's going on, and then relieving them. You know, I like building that tension and making them think, oh god, is he, is he really? Is he really losing it here? And then relieving them with something, yeah. and then taking them back there again. So I like I like to play with people. I like to you know play with their with what's going on and mm -hmm. and, and and use ourselves against ourselves. You know, so it's so easy to uh, take the prejudice of people and what they they allude to what you're saying when actually you're not saying that, and yeah. then, and then making light of that and the fact that you thought that way. Do you see what I'm saying? No, I understand. It's like yeah. when I was in Ireland. So I go to Ireland, right? And I say, oh, it's brilliant. You know, you're all skint now, but you spent all your money on the roads, which yeah. is brilliant. I said, because you want to be like the mainland. And every time I fail, they all go, boo, and all that. <laughs> and I say, the mainland of Spain, France, Germany, of Europe, not of the United Kingdom. You know, it's there, it's yeah. straight away. It's that's what, but we all do it. We're all guilty of it. And I'm just saying, it's the Irish. I'm, oh, now I'm going to get loads of Irish people hating me, but 
what I'm saying, we, we all, this is what I did, you see, now I've already prejudged other people's <laughs> judgments. That's insecurity, that's all it is, that's all, anyway. So, who are your comedy heroes? Like, who? Well, this is always a good question. It changes a lot, really. But I, I always think afterwards, oh, why didn't I say that person? But I love Andy, Andy Kaufman, Kaufman, however you want to say it. Uh, uh, Steve Martin. Uh, you know, um, you know, I like people like Bill Bailey, and I love people like um, you know, in this country, um, uh, many people. Stanley Baxter, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, um, obviously, all of like um, Spike Milligan, Michael Benteen. All people will be doing something a little bit different and alternative, you know. And um, I, I like that. That, that. The kind of comic style. Like. You met Eddie Izzard, didn't you? Oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've known Eddie for years. Yeah, we all come, well, we all know each other. Some people become famous, don't they? But we've all kind of worked together yeah. for many years. So yeah, but Eddie made a point in 2008. He saw me at the comedy store and he said, um, you know, you got to you've got to stop doing this. You must stop all this. You must go on tour. You must build it, they will come and you will be godlike. That's what you, that's his words, you'll be godlike. I've got many doing comedy, but that's where Eddie sees everything. Yeah. He sees it to the extreme, you know. So it was really that 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 point when he was saying to me, you know, and other people have been saying stuff, but it, he was the catalyst really that made me thought I've got to stop this now and I've got to go on tour and, and, yes. and create what I want to create. Not yes. not what because when you work comedy clubs, what um, you, you your detriment is actually your, your professionalism. You know, because you want to get booked again, you want to earn money and you want to make the promoter happy. And that really is detrimental because actually you're not, there's no artistic fulfillment in that. You know what I mean? You're kind of whoring yourself, if you like, or you, you know, you're, you could be really being accused of being a hack, maybe. I don't know. I'm not saying all comics that play comedy clubs are hacks. Please don't think that. But for me personally, I felt that that's what was becoming and happening. And I would just be going A, B, C, D, finish, you know. So when and where is your show on? Well, it's loosely, loosely based on the show, uh, you can call it that. It's at the Cabaret Bar at 8 o'clock in the Pleasant School Yard here in the finest city in Britain, Edinburgh, yes. next to London. Thank you so much for talking with Oh, no, thanks for having me. I, I can't believe you kept me on this long. It's amazing. You can cut it, can't you? <laughs> Always edit. <laughs> <laughs> this has thanks. been Lauren Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Thanks very much.